Hey guys, welcome back to Shovel Knight. I'm going to start this episode by saying I'm actually having to do post-commentary on this episode specifically. Because my capture software decided that I didn't need that commentary track. Things should be back to normal for next episode. So I'm just kind of going to be going over what I was doing here. See, as I actually discovered this room under the tavern that I'd missed before... Here's Chester, the merchant that always sells us the relics. Discovered he has a fishing rod, which I decided to buy. He also has a chaos orb, which I did not have the gold for at this moment. See, this actually explains a little bit, because I knew there was a fishing rod in the game, but I had yet to find it. And also this guy dancing around on top of the barrels sells chalices that I'm supposed to use at a certain spot. Not quite sure of where this spot is. I think it might be the the uh, Truple Pond that I've been to several times without accomplishing anything. Uh, another thing I was saying in this episode was that I was going to start cutting out some of the bits of of me just doing stuff in town because it's not really that useful. Right here, I'm deciding on which of these three potential dungeons we can go to. So we can take out Treasure Knight, Mole Knight, or Plague Knight. So, yeah, I decided to cut out bits of the part in towns just because it, it takes up unnecessary amount of time, so I'll just do some of that off screen. I went back to the Lich Yard and got a bunch of the secrets that I had missed and I used them used the gold from that to buy another meal ticket and increase my health one more step and this area here I decided to explore first because I had a big gem on it so I assumed that meant it would have a lot of money you see here we need to use the phase locket to get over these spikes there's lots of magic bottles laying around and Plenty of treasure in the chest. Lots of gems here. You can take it over that slime pretty easily. Not too much of an issue. You can use the phase locket to dodge stuff and... That did not see that wave coming at the time. I tried to phase, but it might have been a little too late. Oh, it happens. I actually ended up spending quite a bit more time here than I wanted. You can expect a fail montage here eventually. Oh, and if you're wondering why Shovel Knight seems to turn invisible at times, it is because of the way the game is recording. Like, the game is playing at 60 FPS, but I'm recording at 30 for YouTube, so like a lot of classic NES games and stuff, your character tends to flash when it takes damage, so some of those frames are getting rendered out, and Shovel Knight is just appearing invisible during those, so that's what's going on with that. We had a another death there that was due to my own incompetence. Somehow one of my treasure bags ended up way over there. Found a nice secret hidden in the wall. Got us a diamond. Finally managed to get it up there. I gave up on that other bag since I don't think I could actually make the jump. And there was so close to making it to the end. I'm not sure how many attempts this actually took. It doesn't seem like this was the hard part of this. I believe it might have actually been the... the area after this. I like to get in that little secret kind of cubby hole there. 
I feel like it makes the jump over to the second spikes easier. See there? Second time's the charm there. I actually made it over the... over the spikes and dodged the little monster down there. I believe this room here is where it started to get a little tricky. We have these... I don't know what you call these, like, bird things flying around. It's kind of bouncing all over the place. And right there, I... I don't even think I got hit. I just... fell. Sadly, you can't t really see what happened due to the issue with the flashing I talked about earlier. But I believe if there's going to be a montage, it should be right there. I do believe that took several attempts. Like I said, I'm, I'm not particularly great at these old school platformers, but they have a certain kind of nostalgic charm to them that I absolutely love. Now see here, I realize I don't need to actually cross the spike, so I can just drop down and assassinate that, that creature. So here we go once again with the attempt at this, which failed miserably, dying in the exact same spot. The only saving grace is that I did, in fact, manage to collect my money, which is now hovering in the same place it was previously. And while we're uh, just kind of Tracking through the level for the... I don't know how many of the time. Uh, my overall opinion for Shovel Knight so far is... Pretty solid. Like, you're seeing me just fail and die a lot. But honestly, that's just my own ineptitude. It has nothing to do with the actual game. Quite terrible at platformers, to be honest. But for some reason, I do love them, and here we go. No montage needed, I guess, as we actually made it to the end and got a music sheet. Thankfully, there was no actual loss there, so we actually came out quite ahead in gold. So I've decided now to go back to the village and pick up that other item from Chester. Stop and drop off the music sheet on our way. Get a little bit extra gold. Oh yeah, I guess I can say that I said the commentary should be back to normal, the normal live commentary for part four. I am planning to release a kind of, I don't even know what episode I'm on. This will be part four. Okay. So the next will be part five where there's a returns to normal. There's probably going to be a very short like episode 4.5 because I recorded an interesting little thing that happened off screen. When I wasn't, you know, actually doing a, trying to do an episode, I was just maneuvering around doing stuff in town and whatnot. Okay, so I've decided to actually take on, take on Plague Knight at the Explodatorium, because that sounds like an awesome place. And this is a, an area that just, you can see right away this has such like uh, inspiration from old school games with the the fire here spitting up from these platforms as you step on them. There's me trying out the Chaos Orb which is pretty fun. It's a nice item. I like it for uh, close quarters. Since it bounces around it can actually hit enemies multiple times. There's where I discovered that these rat things like to explode. And that's going to be a common theme for the rest of the level. Acquire some gold here. We have 
you know, several more rats to deal with. There is, in fact, a secret in the upper left there. Unfortunately, right there, I destroyed the sand necessary to uh, actually make the jump. So you can see I, I managed to open it, but I can't actually get up there. I decided to try and reset the area. All I really managed to do was reset the rats. I did successfully pogo off of one and make it up to the up to the chest. So that's a you know, that's the best possible result. Even if not necessarily the intended method. And we have these kinda I wanna say carpet bombing like dark phoenix like creatures. Which are quite pesky. Especially since, like right here, I'm mainly trying focusing on the platforms and where I'm stepping. So having an enemy flying directly overhead, throwing explosive, explosive bottles or whatever at me, is a little, little distracting. Decided to not bother with the gym down there. Just progress on. Now, I was thinking this actually looks like an area where there's a secret, possibly, up top. But at this time, I wasn't... I didn't notice it at first, so it was kind of tricky to get to. So this is probably one I'll have to come back and check out again later on. Kind of like what I did with the Lich Yard. So I'll probably come back and get that off screen. Got a new kind of frustrating enemy type here. The guy just likes to dance around and throw bombs. We're also getting a new kind of dirt. You notice when you do the down strike through it, you actually fall really fast. And another new enemy here. I don't know what these are actually called. I call them chompers. You'll eventually see why. We got this nice little section here with the these, like, jars that are launching the lids up. Some of the lids have spikes. I believe right here I was trying to time out with the platform, but... It just wasn't working, and I just kind of gave up on it and moved on. Decided to stop wasting time. It's just a couple gems wasn't really worth it. Here now we have the platforms getting a bit more advanced. Seeing as not every platform is on the same timer now. There's times you want to jump while you're in the air. Other times you want to move. And so forth. Here comes another chomper. Which apparently somehow killed. Here we have a good example of them running on different timers. Trying to avoid being lifted up into the spikes. And there, I mistimed it. It was a bit of an issue. I don't think this area took too many attempts. Not enough for me to really edit through, I don't think. Thankfully, there is this turkey right there for when I inevitably get blown up by a rat. Another example of this new kind of dirt. It's good to see new mechanics being added in every level. Rather like it. So heading back into the room where we died previously. Kind of slowly making our way back over to the upper spikes. There, I decided just to jump over and not wait for the actual lift up. So now I'm actually waiting for the timer. 
managed to recover all of my gold and just going for it now. Take out these two. Now sadly I realized afterwards that I needed to pogo off of those to get up to that GM up top. A little saddened by that. Ultimately just going to have to move on though. Got another new enemy right here. This one just likes to walk and throw crap. I'm trying to figure out a strategy here to kill it. Which should be... Should be easy enough, but for some reason I seem to be incapable of jumping and throwing a fireball at the same time. Which is weird because I do it frequently. So I just, just said screw it and moved on. Yeah, we got some more rats. I'm actually trying to go up to those gyms. Managed to do it successfully, and the kind of a-hole phoenixes are back. With their uh, carpet bombing. Imagine that gets really old really quick. I don't know why I jumped there. Didn't really need to pogo over that, but I did. Barely avoided getting hit by that. Now there's barely any platform here. I'm happy that those two slimes just kind of took themselves out. Here I'm trying to manipulate the, the phoenix things to drop the explosives on the area there so it'll make a path for me, and then the slime knocks me into the hole. Oh yeah. So, fresh attempt, taking out slimes and just failing the very first jump. Sometimes this is embarrassing just to watch. But again, I make no claim to be a platformer expert. Also, know some of my gold is in the hole. Completely out of reach. We had the slime trying to assassinate me again. Thankfully, that time I was a little more on the ball with the dodge. And here, I remember that I have the phase locket. And I can use that to just bypass these. I don't know why I felt the need to use it there. There is a music sheet that I have yet to figure out how I'm supposed to get. I kind of assume I'm supposed to lure this guy over here and pogo off of him, but... He is refusing to move from that particular spot. So it looks like there might be a way to get up there, since there is sand above it. Again, something else I'm going to have to come back to, so I didn't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to get it. There, I tried to just make the jump, but all it really did was get that guy to spawn back, which was... Not ideal. Here we got kind of a mini boss, which is really a first. I found that really interesting. Kind of mad scientist guy throwing explosives and then he like turns into this crazy like yeti thing. It actually takes quite a while to kill. Unfortunately it doesn't seem to track his life anywhere, so I never actually knew how close I was to killing him. So he does leave himself open right here to a, where you can just wail on him when he's throwing the potions. It seemed like the Yeti was running a lot slower this time, which kind of threw my timing off on the pogos. I don't know, maybe I was just imagining it, but it didn't seem to be going as fast.
Alright, so the mini boss is down. Dropped a nice amount of gold. I believe this was the most difficult area of the level. The area between this checkpoint and the next. So we now have these platforms that are firing automatically rather than when touched. Honestly, I'm surprised I made that jump right there. As in subsequent attempts, it became quite difficult. We're having a duel with this guy. It's kind of night right here on the platform. I was really hoping the fire would damage him and I could use it to my advantage, but that is not the case, honestly. I managed to finish him in midair there, and that was kind of awesome. Kind of scouting the path ahead. And just kind of giving that all kinds of note. I'm going to be using the phase locket to get past a lot of it. Used the phase locket there even though I very clearly made it through. This area is going to require some kind of precise timing. No, once again, the face locket is my best friend. And there's why I call those chompers. Really should look up what they're actually called. For some reason I found this room to be way more difficult than it should have been. It's because for some reason I'm failing at the timing. But, um... What do you say we, uh... Cue up that fail montage right about now. Look, I finally did it. And new checkpoint. I have successfully lost all of my money. I don't know if you were able to see it in the montage there, but uh, at one point it actually stopped dropping three uh, bags of money. Really kind of depressing when I think about it. I got these new kind of enemies here that kind of mimic Shovel Knight, and they try to do the pogo attack on you whenever they get the chance. Seeing as they only take one hit to kill, I decided the fireball was the best solution for them. Seems to be accurate. Almost walked by the big pile of loot that I desperately need now. Now, that last area was really rough for me for some reason. We now have these Shovel Knight clone things trying to pogo us from above. They're kind of easy to manipulate. Not too difficult. That one spazzing out a bit. 
and he punished me for laughing at him, which I totally deserved. Alright, so we've made our way back to this room. Thankfully there's not too much that can go wrong at this point. Kinda got it. Kinda understood now. I also noticed there is a kind of a pile on the side of that wall over there I didn't see before. I shoveled my loot down the hole. Got another one of these guys. I'm trying not to get hit, I'm just going to go with the phase locket to avoid it altogether. Now we've got one of the bomb throwing guys on the platform up here. That's uh, less than ideal. Keep hitting the wrong button to bring up my relic menu. Here I decided to use the locket just so I can close in on him without worrying about the bombs. I've noticed the sparkles at the bottom of the screen. Decided to try out fishing for the first time. And there I didn't realize that was a cue for me to hit the button. So, you know, trying again. Taking a bit longer, but this time, success! Finally, we have the last checkpoint of the level. We're now going in to face Plague Knight himself. I gotta say, of all the bosses so far, definitely the most frantic fight. I'm also realizing I didn't find a relic in this level. I wonder if that's hidden in one of the areas I wasn't able to get to just yet. Hopefully I'll find that in my off-screen go-through. Also be glad you're not hearing my terrible voice acting right now when I was attempting this. You see here he likes to bounce around kind of chaotically throwing bombs. And you get these like fire things going all throughout the level. He summons these huge containers of whatever kind of chemical that is. And if he hits them with a bomb, they cause a much larger explosion and destroy more of the stage. And they can set off chain reactions like that. As you can imagine, compared to the last few boss fights, I was not expecting this to be so chaotic, so it's a little off guard right there. Trying to strategize on the fly. Now going in, I have a little bit better idea of what I'm doing little bit. Now here I've decided to attempt using the phase locket so I can avoid it is or avoid taking damage and just kind of stay in his face. I'm not succeeding at doing that, but that was the plan. You see how a large chunk of the level was just exploded. He's now spawning more of these jars at a time. See, I've actually got him really close to dead right here. I just wasn't able to avoid that. 
now I've pretty much got it figured out. I believe this is the successful attempt. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I was a little depressed right here once I realized that I had to get further down the stage just to recover my money. Now I've decided to try out this new Chaos Sphere, let it have its first real taste of combat. As you can see, the way the level is laid out where there's so many just different edges that it can bounce off of, it is actually quite effective here, more so than I expected it to be. You can see there, it hit him twice and I didn't even throw it in the right direction. So that's just fantastic. Uh, unfortunately now I've run out of magic, so all I can do is melee. But there we go. There's the killing blow. Got a big chunk of gold for that. And that is the Explodatorium done. And Plague Knight dead. Of course we have the little little nap time sequence here. Fortunately, there is no catching of Shield Knight here. Just a bit more loot. Taking us up to just under 4,000. And that pretty much wraps it up. I'll see you guys next time with live commentary. And we'll also check out this armor outpost.